Epicurus, born in 341 BCE on the island of Samos, emerged as one of the most influential figures in ancient philosophy. His teachings, rooted in the pursuit of pleasure and tranquility, offered a stark contrast to the dominant philosophical doctrines of his time. The Hellenistic period, characterized by political upheaval and the fragmentation of Alexander the Great's empire, created a fertile ground for philosophical schools. Epicurus' philosophy can be understood as a response to the existential anxieties of his age. His foundational tenet posited that pleasure is the highest good, a principle that often led to misunderstandings about the nature of Epicurean hedonism. Unlike the cruder interpretations that equate pleasure with indulgence, Epicurus distinguished between different types of pleasures. He advocated for the pursuit of a taraxia, a state of serene calmness, and aponia, the absence of physical pain. These concepts are pivotal to understanding Epicurean ethics, which prioritize mental and bodily tranquility over transient, sensory gratifications. Central to Epicurean thought is the differentiation between natural and unnecessary desires. Natural desires are those essential to survival and happiness, such as the need for food, shelter, and friendship. Unnecessary desires, on the other hand, include the pursuit of luxury, fame, and excessive wealth. Epicurus taught that by focusing on simple, natural desires one could achieve a sustainable form of happiness. This simplicity is not a form of asceticism but a deliberate choice to live a life free from the disturbances caused by unnecessary desires. Epicurus' metaphysics, grounded in the atomistic theory, further supports his ethical framework. He adopted and expanded upon the atomism of Democritus, positing that the universe is composed of indivisible atoms moving through the void. This mechanistic view of the cosmos eliminates the need for supernatural explanations and divine intervention. For Epicurus, understanding the natural world through reason and empirical observation was crucial to dispelling the fears that arise from ignorance and superstition. The gods, in Epicurean thought, exist but are indifferent to human affairs they do not reward or punish, thus freeing individuals from the dread of divine retribution. The physical theory of Epicurus also rejects the notion of an afterlife, emphasizing that death is simply the cessation of sensation. This perspective aims to liberate individuals from the fear of death, which Epicurus identified as a major source of human anxiety. By accepting that death is nothing to us, since we do not experience it, one can focus on the quality of the present life rather than being preoccupied with the afterlife. Epicurus' commitment to natural science and empirical inquiry highlights the importance he placed on knowledge as a means to achieve tranquility. The study of nature or physics is not an end in itself but a tool to cultivate a life free from irrational fears. By understanding the natural causes of phenomena, one can dispel the anxieties rooted in ignorance and superstition. In sum, the foundation of Epicurean philosophy lies in its pursuit of a life characterized by simple pleasures, rational understanding, and the absence of unnecessary fears. Epicurus' teachings on pleasure, desires, and the nature of the universe offer a comprehensive framework for achieving a life of contentment and peace. Through the cultivation of ataraxia and aponia, and the rational examination of the world, Epicureanism provides a timeless guide to living well. In the pursuit of happiness, Epicurus provides a nuanced understanding of pleasure, a central concept in his ethical framework. Pleasure for Epicurus is the starting point and the goal of a happy life. He distinguishes between different types of pleasures to guide us toward a life of true contentment. At the heart of this distinction is the recognition that not all pleasures are of equal value. Bodily pleasures, which are immediate and often fleeting, are contrasted with mental pleasures which tend to be more profound and enduring. Epicurus categorizes pleasures into kinetic and static. Kinetic pleasures arise from active processes such as eating when one is hungry or drinking when one is thirsty. These pleasures are transient and often require continuous action to sustain them. Static pleasures, on the other hand, result from a state of satisfaction and contentment, such as the feeling of being well nourished or free from pain. Epicurus places greater emphasis on static pleasures as they are more conducive to achieving ataraxia, the state of tranquility and freedom from disturbance. To live a life of Epicurean simplicity, one must cultivate an understanding of natural and necessary desires. Natural desires are those that are innate and essential for our well-being, 
such as the need for food, shelter, and companionship. These desires, when satisfied, lead to a stable and enduring form of happiness. Epicurus advises us to focus on these simple, natural desires, as their fulfillment is relatively easy and brings genuine contentment. Unnatural and unnecessary desires, however, are socially constructed and often lead to dissatisfaction and turmoil. The pursuit of wealth, power and fame falls into this category. These desires are insatiable and often lead to a cycle of perpetual striving and disappointment. By recognizing and minimizing these desires, one can avoid the disturbances they bring and achieve a more peaceful and satisfying life. Self-sufficiency is a key aspect of Epicurean simplicity. Epicurus teaches that we should aim to be self-reliant, reducing our dependency on external circumstances and possessions. This does not mean living in isolation, but rather cultivating a mindset that values what is within our control and seeks contentment in simple, readily available pleasures. Self-sufficiency leads to a sense of empowerment and reduces the anxiety associated with external dependencies. Friendship plays a crucial role in Epicurean ethics. Epicurus considers friendship to be one of the greatest sources of happiness. True friends provide support, security and joy, helping to achieve ataraxia. The bonds of friendship are based on mutual respect and shared values, offering a stable source of pleasure that transcends material wealth. In the Epicurean community, friendship is both a means and an end to a happy life. Intellectual pursuits and the cultivation of wisdom are also essential for achieving Epicurean simplicity. Epicurus encourages the study of philosophy and the natural sciences as a way to understand the world and dispel irrational fears. Knowledge, particularly self-knowledge, helps to manage desires and make informed choices that lead to a tranquil life. The practice of philosophy is thus a practical tool for living well, rather than an abstract academic exercise. Epicurus critiques materialism and the excessive pursuit of wealth and luxury. He argues that such pursuits are misguided and often lead to more harm than good. Material wealth and luxury create artificial desires that are difficult to satisfy and often lead to envy, anxiety and social discord. By focusing on the simple pleasures that nature readily provides, one can achieve a more sustainable and fulfilling happiness. In contemporary terms, Epicurean simplicity aligns with movements such as minimalism and simple living. These modern approaches resonate with Epicurus' teachings emphasizing the importance of decluttering one's life from unnecessary possessions and focusing on what truly matters. The pursuit of happiness, according to Epicurus, is not about accumulating more but about appreciating and being content with less. Epicurus' ethical framework offers practical guidance for living a simple, happy life. By understanding the nature of pleasure, managing desires and fostering self-sufficiency in meaningful relationships, one can achieve a state of tranquility and contentment. This approach provides a timeless blueprint for personal well-being, advocating for a life free from the turmoil of unnecessary desires and grounded in the appreciation of simple, natural pleasures. The legacy of Epicurean simplicity has endured through the ages, influencing a diverse array of thinkers and movements. After the death of Epicurus in 270 BCE, his teachings continued to thrive particularly within the garden, his philosophical school in Athens. The Epicurean community emphasized the practical application of philosophy to everyday life, attracting followers who sought a path to tranquility and happiness. Despite facing criticism from rival schools, such as the Stoics and Platonists, Epicureanism persisted, offering an alternative vision of the good life. Epicurean thought found new audiences during the Roman era, with prominent figures like Lucretius and Horace championing its principles. Lucretius' epic poem De Rerum Natura on the nature of things serves as a vital source for understanding Epicurean philosophy. He, in his poetic exploration of the universe, Lucretius extols the virtues of a life guided by reason, free from the fear of gods and death. His work profoundly impacted Roman intellectual life, illustrating the enduring appeal of Epicurean simplicity. During the Renaissance, a renewed interest in classical philosophy brought Epicureanism back into the intellectual spotlight. Thinkers such as Pierre Gassendi sought to reconcile Epicurean atomism with Christian theology, arguing that the naturalistic explanations provided by Epicurus did not necessarily conflict with religious belief. 
This period saw a revival of Epicurean ideas, particularly the emphasis on empirical observation and the pursuit of knowledge for personal happiness. In the modern era, the principles of Epicurean simplicity have found resonance with various philosophical and lifestyle movements. Minimalism, for instance, echoes the Epicurean critique of materialism and the focus on living a life centered around essential, natural pleasures. Minimalists advocate for reducing possessions and distractions to achieve a more meaningful and satisfying existence. This modern interpretation aligns closely with Epicurus' advice to seek contentment in simplicity and self-sufficiency. Epicureanism also intersects with contemporary discussions on well-being and mental health. The pursuit of ataraxia or mental tranquility is akin to modern concepts of mindfulness and stress reduction. Techniques for managing desires and achieving a balanced life reflect Epicurean strategies for avoiding unnecessary distress and cultivating inner peace. The emphasis on community and friendship in Epicurean thought parallels current understandings of social connections' importance for mental health and overall well-being. Despite its enduring influence, Epicureanism has faced numerous criticisms and misconceptions. One common critique is the misinterpretation of Epicurean hedonism as advocating for indulgence in sensual pleasures. This misunderstanding overlooks the nuanced distinction Epicurus makes between necessary and unnecessary desires and the higher value he places on mental over bodily pleasures. Critics also argue that Epicureanism's rejection of traditional religious beliefs and its naturalistic worldview can lead to nihilism. However, Epicureans counter that their philosophy offers a positive framework for finding meaning and happiness within the bounds of a naturalistic understanding of the world. The balance between simplicity and modern complexity poses another challenge for Epicureanism today. While the principles of living a simple, contented life are appealing, applying them in a world characterized by technological advancement and societal pressures can be difficult. Epicureans must navigate the tension between embracing simplicity and engaging with the complexities of contemporary life. This dynamic underscores the relevance of Epicurean thought in providing guidance on how to achieve well-being in an increasingly complex world.